Hi everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to get your rockets to go to space. Uh, this is not going to be a brand new, fresh from scratch beginner video. Uh, I'm going to assume that you know uh, at least some of the controls and uh, how to use the uh, vehicle assembly building and uh, stuff like that. Uh, this is just going to give you some ideas and uh, some some thoughts and some suggestions about what's worked for me uh, in building rockets. Uh, and let's just start with getting to orbit. Um, a lot of people have a lot of trouble getting to orbit. You know, generally their first few rockets they don't lift off the pad or they blow up right away or they don't get very high or they crash into the ocean or something. So let's let's get to orbit. Let's build a basic rocket that can get us to orbit. So here we are in the vehicle assembly building. Uh, let's just start with the uh, regular command pod Mark 1 and we'll put that up here. I'm going to go with our requisite parachute, the Mark 16 on top. Now staging obviously is very critical uh, so we're going to go with the TR-18A stack decoupler underneath that. Uh, and then the all right here we go this is the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get the inline advanced stabilizer grab that from the uh, control tab and put that right under there because we want this thing attached to the rocket uh, right up until we are re-entering and uh, heading back down to the to the ground uh, right so then propulsion. Let's get some propulsion up in here. Uh, for this basic rocket, let's just go with uh, the large, the largest of the small fuel tanks. We'll put it that way. And the engine I use the best, uh, that I find is the best for this, is the LVT45, because that one's got thrust vectoring, which means that you can uh, control the direction that the thrust is coming out of the engine and so you can use the engine to steer the craft you don't need any uh, RCS or anything like that I'm not even gonna put any RCS on this uh, on this vehicle we don't need that for this for this demonstration so this is gonna be our second stage uh, we won't use this one until we get to space or at least we're pretty close to space so let's put another stack decoupler underneath that and then uh, we're going to build our first stage. So let's just, you know what, for this demonstration, I'm going to stick with only the smaller size um, parts. So let's go with another one of these large fuel tanks. Uh, move this up a bit. And perhaps one more. There's probably more than is necessary here. Yeah, you know what, let's not bother with that. Uh and I think we're going to go with the 45s the whole time here. So there's this is going to be part of our first stage and let's put some radial decouplers right here the TT38K and we're going to use we're going to use this thing called down here. I don't know if you've used this yet. It's called symmetry mode. This is very 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 important. Uh you click this and then when you add let's go to number 4 for for this example and then when you add you can see it adds 4 uh, symmetrically around the outside of the uh, of the craft that you're building. So, and then this is going to be this is called angle snap. It's only on or off. I like to keep it on, and that way it locks it to sp specific angles. It just makes things a little bit easier. So let's put these radial decouplers on here, and then we'll grab more of these large fuel tanks, and we'll attach them to the radial decouplers like that. And let's just keep using these LVT-45s. That looks pretty good to me. So, uh, this should be sufficient to get us to orbit, actually. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, there's one other thing. Right. Uh, fuel. If you might find that your rockets are running out of fuel uh, pretty fast or, or uh, not in the order that you expect, then uh, one thing that can be super helpful is the external fuel duct. Uh, these things are critical for managing your uh, initial stages of your rockets, definitely. Uh, so each one of these, what this does is it transfers fuel from the tank that 
you first click on into the tank that you click on second. So what I'm going to do is you'll see how this works in a second. I'm going to attach this to the inside of the outer tanks and send them to, you can see there's arrows that indicate the direction of where the fuel is going to go and we'll click on the inside tank like that. It's not beautiful but it'll uh, it'll get the job done. And so now uh, this engine in the center is going to draw its fuel not from this tank but first from all of these tanks. These tanks will feed this tank and only once these ones are empty will this tank begin to drain. Uh, struts. Struts are the next thing that you definitely definitely are going to need uh, in pretty much all of your Kerbal Space Program experiences right here the EAS4 strut connector it works just like the uh, fuel line does uh, you click on one thing and then you click on another thing and it basically makes this metal bar that attaches the two together so when I am using symmetry I like to connect the struts so that they go around the outside of the ship like that uh, connecting each one of these boosters to the center stack and then using another set to attach the outer stacks to the uh, the center stack higher up towards the top so that it doesn't get all wobbly and then alright yeah so this looks pretty good to me um, let's take a look over here at the staging we've got these four engines are gonna fire first this is gonna be our first stage that's not what we want we want this one to run as well otherwise what's the point of having the fuel cross feed like this so we're gonna grab that first engine and we're gonna drag it down and so now we have all five engines are going to start at the same time on the first stage. And then at our next stage, we're going to decouple the four boosters. You can see that uh, they are highlighted when I mouse over the thing here, when I mouse over the icon. And then once that's done, we're going to decouple that lower booster, the lower part of the second, uh, sorry, central stack. We'll decouple that, and then this engine's going to fire. And then at the end, we'll decouple that, and it'll leave us with just our pod and our parachute, and we'll deploy the parachute at the end. So, this is going to be our uh, this is going to be our launch vehicle. Not too complicated. So let's just go and launch it. All right, now, uh, you'll notice that it's a little bit wobbly here. This stuff is moving around. It's because this rocket is sitting directly on the engines. That's generally a bad idea. If your rocket is sitting only on the center engine, you put these things up too high, uh, and you should go back and try again. Uh, these are lined up just so that the four are supporting it. Uh, but if you're going to make a rocket any bigger than this, you should be using the... Um, the launch supports. So uh, let's go ahead and launch this rocket. So we're going to bring our throttle all the way up to 100% and we're going to turn on SAS. That's very important with the T key. And that will uh, allow this part that we added earlier. Uh, it's basically like a computer that controls the engines and does everything it can to keep the rocket on the trajectory that you have um, set it to using the nav ball. So we're going to launch this rocket, and we're taking off. And you'll find that uh, until we get out of the lower atmosphere, we're not going to be able to get too fast. You'll notice that we've uh, our rate of ascent has uh, our rate of acceleration rather has decreased, and it's not going to get much better until we're out of the lower atmosphere. Uh, the lower atmosphere at this mark here is about 12 kilometers or 12,000 meters. Um, once we get to there, that's when we can start pitching over in uh, into our orbit. So let's go into the map view. I like to look at it this way. So we can see that the highest we're going to get if we cut the engines right now is 13,000 meters, 14, 15. Uh, let's get the nav ball up here so we can see what's happening. Now we're almost out of fuel, so as soon as these engines run out, we're going to stage and drop those extra tanks. We don't need those. Now you'll notice our speed is going down. That's because this rocket is currently heavier than this engine can uh, support. 
but now that we've burned a little bit of the fuel in this tank uh, we're back to accelerating again. That's generally poor rocket design. Now we're at 20 kilometers, so I'm going to start pitching over. We're going to pitch over into the 90 degree angle, and I'm going to put it to about there. And the SAS will hold us in that position, in that attitude. And you'll notice that the, this icon is the actual direction of movement, and it's slowly moving over towards the direction that we've aimed the rocket at. And if we zoom out here, we can see now that we're making a very good arc. Uh, the altitude that we want to get to, at least, is 70 kilometers. 70 kilometers is the uh, limit of the atmosphere. And once you're past 70 kilometers, uh, that's when you can get yourself into a stable orbit. So here we are at 75, and I'm just going to cut the throttle. Just like that. And uh, we can coast now. We can coast all the way up. So I am going to just add some time acceleration right here to just get us up uh, and out of the atmosphere. There are more efficient ways to do this, but this is just a demonstration. So let's go back to here. Once you hear the music start, that's how you know you're in space once you get past 70 kilometers. Now I'm going to pitch over some more and... Where I want to be is lined up exactly at 90 degrees. This is going to push us directly away, or rather, directly around the planet Kerbin. And we're almost at the top, so I'm going to go back to full throttle again. And now this stage is almost out of fuel. So as soon as that's done, we're going to stage. We're going to ditch that thing and fire the next stage. And this one's going to put us into orbit. Now don't worry too much if you start to go past the uh, the peak of your uh, para, uh, parabola here. Uh, that won't really affect the... Uh, it'll affect only the efficiency, but not necessarily uh, the fact that you'll get to orbit. So we're just going to continue accelerating here. And once we get to about 2200 meters per second, that's when we are going to be in orbit. Uh, you can watch it from this thing and then kill the engines once you get that far. But what I like to do is zoom out and look at the map view like this. Once, there it is, the uh, other end appeared and once it's, once, the, nah, once this icon shows up and switches sides with the other one, that's when you know that you're in orbit. So uh, we can see that the periapsis is uh... seventy eight kilometers and the other one is hundred and seventy four kilometers so we're definitely in orbit at this point so congratulations you made it to orbit uh... from here you can get to just about anywhere this is the very first step in going to anywhere in kerbal space program you gotta get to orbit first uh... and then from there you can make your ascent to the moon or to minmus or to any of the other planets or the sun if that's really where you want to go so congratulations on getting to orbit uh... getting back from orbit is very easy as well you want to thrust in the opposite direction of uh... your movement so let's rotate the craft around here you'll notice that this icon is slightly different from the one over here this one has an empty circle in the center and this one has a cross through it. It's hard to see right here because it's directly over the uh, the edge of the nav ball. But uh, there's a cross through the center. So you want to line up your the center of that thing here. And now we're aimed in the opposite direction of the direction that we're moving in. Uh, and so we can thrust again. And this is going to reduce our speed. Oh, we'll zoom in here. And you can see we've already lost orbit and we're back to a parabola. And we can get back down into the ocean again. And if you time it just right, you can land uh, in a uh, pretty close area to uh, any specific area. It's nice to land back at the launch pad again, but I didn't want to have to go all the way around. So we can just time accelerate here to get back down. Oops. And now we're back in the atmosphere because we we're underneath 70 kilometers. At this point, I would turn off SAS when you're re-entering the atmosphere because what that does is it uses up 
your electric charge. And you notice that when I rotate the ship, it uses up the electric charge to accelerate the ship in different directions. And when you run out of electric charge, you can no longer control anything. Uh, it gets really difficult, and you can't regenerate electric charge on this ship because it doesn't have any solar panels. And uh, the engines regenerate uh, electricity, but we're out of fuel, so that's not going to work. At this point, we can stage once more to get rid of this booster that's not doing anything, and we don't need this uh, advanced uh, stabilizer anymore. So we'll jettison that, and we're just the command pod. And so we'll re-enter the atmosphere here. And you probably know how to do this. Just head back in. I like to open the parachute once I get to an altitude of 5 kilometers. Uh, that's if you're just using the pod. If you've got more stuff attached to it, uh, you may need more time to slow down. But I find a very good efficiency is to wait till you get to a 5 kilometer altitude. Because we're slowing down pretty, pretty rapidly from the air resistance anyway. And then at 5 kilometers, I'm just going to deploy the parachute. And uh, that'll bring us safely back down to Kerbin. You may have noticed that the parachute doesn't open all the way. That's because uh, it's in uh, drogue shoot mode right now. And uh, once you get to 500 meters above the ground, not necessarily sea level. In this case, it will be sea level. But uh, once you get 500 meters above the ground that you're over, the parachute will open up fully. Uh, do not use time acceleration when you're passing that threshold because sometimes the physics gets a little bit crazy and uh, the parachute can sometimes rip right off and your poor Kerbal will fall to his death. Uh, but feel free to use time acceleration after that to speed up this lengthy process of slowly falling back down to the ground. Also don't use time acceleration right before impact with the ground uh, because that also can cause funny physics to happen uh, and I've lost more than a few Kerbals by having the pod spontaneously explode when it hits the ground uh, when coming down under parachute with time acceleration on so don't do that. So that's it. That's the uh, that's the basics on how to get to orbit. Uh, be sure to check out uh, in the future my channel. Uh, I'll have more videos uh, about how to reach the moon and uh, Minmus and other planets as well. So thanks. Don't forget to subscribe and stuff. I'd appreciate it. No, seriously, if you could do that, that would be great. Trust me, it'll be worth it. You won't be disappointed. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Okay, thanks. Okay, bye.